Hello there, you're watching NDTV. I'm Maha Siddiqui. Let's talk business now. Nifty Sensex ended the truncated week on a marginally higher note, but uh, volatility remains the flavor of the Lal Street. Late buying in financial stocks sparred the market gains. On the other hand, IT shares saw a dismal Thursday after TCS uh, flagged concerns and near term uncertainty in its BFSI segment. My colleague Neeraj Shah joins us with the market wrap. Flattish end to the week. So you had the markets actually just staying very, very steady. Specific pockets did well or no otherwise. So private banks led the charge higher in the session today, led by Indusin Bank, but a bunch of others also. So private banks were doing well. What didn't do well were IT majors, for example, which had a fairly lackluster day post what TCS numbers uh, did put out and, and therefore Infi, Tech Mahindra, HCL Tech, almost everything came off. And um, oil and gas had a subdued day with at least the oil marketing companies had a subdued day uh, because of the higher crude prices. Crude is now at the highest level in 2023. That led to brokerages downgrading some of the oil marketing companies like HPCL as well. So these corrected a bit in the session today. However, uh, despite a flat market, the breadth was in slightly in favor of the advances. So about whatever, maybe 10% maybe higher the number of advances as opposed to the decline. So marginally better. Um, the key movers have included, like I said, banks. So Indescent Bank, uh, maybe ICICI Bank and some of the others did well. But on the downside, the, the losers had fairly pronounced losses. So Infosys was down over 2 to 2.5%, HCL Tech down, Tech Mahindra down. So IT majors really pulled back all the gains that we would have gotten or that we got because of what the banks did. Speaking of banks, AU Small Finance Bank had a or AU Bank had a 17% up move because the CEO got an extension for three years. The fears these days around CEOs not getting their extensions is pretty high, and especially in this case was very high uh, because they have gotten. I think that stock did really well, ending up in strong double digits and straying that way for better part of the trading day. So no corrections came in into that. And today was a interesting day because a bunch of brokerages initiated coverage on a number of stocks. Uh, so HSBC initiated coverage on Rain Rainbow Children's Medicare. That stock was up. Uh, there was uh, Aisha Motors and Goldman Sachs initiated coverage. That stock was up. Glenmark Life, Kotak initiated coverage. That stock was up. So a bunch of brokerage-backed movers did really well in trade. But net net, uh, flattish end to a to a to a not so bad week. But we are now kind of uh, hitting resistances at higher levels. It'll be interesting to see what we do next week. With this, it's back to you. Neeraj May, thanks for all those details. And we also spoke to Bank of America Securities, uh, Amish Shah, about uh, his investment picks. Listen in. First of all, we prefer large caps over mid caps. Uh, uh, you know, A, because there will be a flight to quality, but also... Uh, as I argued that the 75% of the 20 billion passive flow that I spoke about uh, ends up into large caps. You know, so you have more flows supporting the large cap uh, uh, companies as opposed to small and mid caps. Uh, spe spe specific to sectors, uh, we prefer financials over IT. We prefer investments or capex related themes over consumption. Uh, we prefer power utilities over telecom. And we prefer materials, which is steel and cement uh, primarily, over energy. Uh, so, so those have been our uh, model portfolio for a while now, uh, and we continue to continue to have that skew. Well, and India's uh, trade deficit widened to its highest in three months in March as exports fell at a faster rate than imports. Trade deficit uh, in March stood at $19.73 billion, which was higher than that recorded in February. My colleague Pallavi Nahata joins in with more details. Pallavi? India's mercantile trade deficit widened to the highest in three months in March as exports fell at a faster pace than imports. The trade deficit rose to about $19.7 billion in March from $17.4 billion in February, while exports fell by 14% year-on-year to about $38 billion. That's still the highest figure we've seen in nine months. Meanwhile, imports fell 8% year-on-year to about $58 billion. That's a three-month high as well. On an annual basis, 
For the full fiscal year, merchandise exports rose 6% and imports rose 16.5%. Meanwhile, services exports rose by 27% while services imports rose by 21%. Back all right, Mayi, thanks. Uh, let's now go across to the other details that we're picking up with regards to Indian investors who are moving to mutual funds and SIPs as equities continue to give flat returns. Association of Mutual Funds data suggests that inflows into equity mutual funds surged to a 12-month high in March with thematic and sectoral schemes aiding the surge. Inflows into SIPs also hit a record high, topping 14,000 crore rupees. Investments in equity-linked schemes surged 31% month-on-month to 20,534 crore rupees. 40 lakh new investors registered with the mutual fund industry in uh, financial year 23. Let's go across to Alex Matthew, Deputy Editor, BQ Prime, for more on this. Alex? Right. Well, on a consolidated basis, you had outflows for the mutual fund industry in the month of March to the extent of 19,260-odd crore rupees. But the real devil is in the detail. And the headline, according to me, is in the inflows that the mutual fund industry enjoyed in equity mutual funds during the month. That stood at over 20,500 crore rupees. Quite a significant portion of that uh, came in through just one scheme. Over 3,000 crore came in through an NFO that was uh, introduced by SBI Mutual Fund. Uh, a lot of inflows coming in the form of sectoral and thematic funds and also uh, through ELSS, which is equity-linked savings schemes. This is understandable because it was the end of the year. Also understandable were the outflows in the debt mutual fund space, where you see uh, about 56,884 crore rupees moving out of debt mutual funds. Most of this was from liquid uh, mutual funds because this is something that happens at the end of the year. Advanced tax payments are due and a lot of corporates pull money out of the short-term debt funds. But here too, the interesting detail is that a lot of the longer-term funds saw significant inflows you will know by now that the taxation rules for debt mutual funds were changed and that came into effect on the 1st of April. So a lot of people tried to push money into the longer term funds at the end of the year, as a result of which the likes of corporate bond fund, dynamic bond fund, long duration fund, as well as the banking and PSU debt fund saw significant inflows. The last important number to focus on is the SIP number. And that, for the first time ever, crossed 14,000 crore. It, in fact, stood at over 14,200 crore rupees and is a sign of great things to come for the mutual fund industry. Many thanks, Alex. Let's move on now to some other stories. After a semiconductor shortage spell trouble for the auto industry, some good news for the sector as sales rev up. Wholesale the sales in uh, Financial year 23 were up 20.4% with 2.12 crore units getting sold. Passenger vehicle sales were in the fast lane growing 26.7% in the fiscal. Now as uh, chip shortages eased and demand for sport utility vehicles uh, surged, two-wheeler sales which have been a concern also saw an uptick. But it was the three-wheeler sales which saw a big surge. Can the industry which had uh, been in the doldrums for some time now sustain its growth momentum? That remains to be seen. All right, uh, moving on now uh, to the other information now that we have for you with regards to business. Now, with Apple reducing its dependence on China, it is uh, India which stands to gain. Apple tripled its production in India, assembling more than 7 billion a dollar worth iPhones in uh, uh, the country. Now, the U.S. Uh, tech giant now makes almost 7% of its iPhones in India. Apple is diversifying its supply chain and migrating iPhone production to India. This comes as an economic triumph for India. Moreover, Apple will open its first two retail stores in India next week, one in Mumbai and the other in New Delhi. Well, that's it then for the moment. We're taking a very quick break now. News and updates will continue. Stay with us.